Hello everyone. Let's provide a solution to this problem. We have 8 to the power of y plus 2 to the power of y equals 30. Okay, and before I proceed, I would like to express this in the same base. So 8 is 2 to the power of 3, then we have y outside plus 2 to the power of y equals 30. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, um, you know, changing the position of the power here so that we can have 2 to the power of y to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of y equal to 30. And from here, what can we observe? We can see that we're having 2 to the power of y in two places, right? So let 2 to the power of y be equal to x. So in that case, we are going to have x to the power of 3 plus x equal to 30. And now let's express um, 30 to be in this format. x to the power of 3 plus x can be equal to 27 plus 3. Now, I did it like this because 27 can be written to half power of 3, and then this 3 will represent the x. But remember, we are solving this completely, so we can't stop at this level yet, right? So take this to this and bring this together. So we're going to have x to the power of 3 minus 27, then plus x minus 3. So we're going to deal with this and deal with this separately. Everything is equal to 0. Now from here, we have x to the power of 3 minus 27 is 3 to the power of 3, right? So we see half plus x minus 3. And this is equal to 0. Now let's remember this standard that a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3 is equal to a minus b into a squared plus a b this is a b then plus b squared so this will now be for the first um, bracket alone right so in place of a minus b we have x minus 3 then a squared here will be x squared plus a b will be x times 3 and that will be 3x then plus b squared is going to be 3 squared, close that, then plus, I'm going to the second bracket, which is x minus 3, and this is equal to 0. So from here, what can we do? We're going to have, um, to pick out the common factor, the common factor is x minus 3. Then in here, I'm going to have x squared plus 3x plus 9, because 3 squared is 9, then plus, the whole of this is out, so we are going to have plus 1 over there, and everything is equal to 0. What again can we do? x minus 3 here, and then in here we are going to have x to the power of 2, plus 3x, plus 10, because 9 plus 1 is 10, Okay, and everything is equal to zero. Now we are going to apply zero product rule. Okay, so a couple of my learners were asking me where can we apply the rule. You're going to apply zero product rule when you have two terms to multiply to get zero. So this is one term and this is another term, right? So multiplying both of them to get zero means that it's either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. Or sometimes both of them can be equal to 0, right? But now let's deal with this. So if x minus 3 is equal to 0, it means that x is equal to 0 plus 3 and then x is equal to 3. Now this is one of the values of x. But remember that we're actually looking for the value of y and not the value of x, right? Good. But from here again, we can get other values of x. 
But from here, let's see if we are going to have real solution or complex solution. Okay, let's use formula to deal with this. x squared plus 3x plus 10 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation. And we can deal with this using uh, the formula method. So from the formula, we are going to have um, x equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And our a is 1, that is the coefficient of x squared, and our b is 3, our c is 10. So x will be minus 3 plus or minus, we have square root of b squared will now be 3 squared minus 4 times a, a is 1, then times c, our c is 10. This is all over 2 times 1. This means that x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus, we have square root of b squared, that will now be 3 squared, giving us 9, minus 4 times 1 times 10 is 40, and this is all over 2. Okay, 2 times 1 is still 2, right? So let me make it 2.0 since I already have decimal point. Now, from here, it means that x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus. We have square root of negative 9 minus 40 minus 40 will give us 31. So we have negative 31. And this is all over 2. And because we have this negative square root, it means that we are going to have this um, complex solution. So this has to be rejected, right? Whatever we are going to have from this must be rejected. So now let's go back to the value of x we got before, which is um, 3. We got x to be equal to 3. Let's go back there. Now that x is equal to 3, and at some point we say that 2 to the power of um. Okay, let me get it again very quickly. Okay, so we got 2 to the power of y to be equal to x, right? So this means that um, 2 to the power of y now will now be equal to x, which is 3. So from here, we need to get the value of y. So how do we get the value of y from here? We can get it by, you know, introducing um, natural log. Because if we don't introduce log, we cannot express 3 to have 2 as the base. So we're going to have log 2 to the power of y is equal to log 3. Now the next thing is the power can always go behind. So we will have um, y log 2 to be equal to log 3. Now what again can I do? Divide this by log 2 so that we can get our y. This and this will be gone. And then y will be equal to log, log 3 over log 2. Now since they are having the same base, we can rewrite this as y being equal to log 3 to the base of 2. So this is the value.